So hello everyone, this has been a fun couple of days. With me are our, um, how do you call it guys? Handsome presenters. Uh, and over there we have support uh, in the background. <laughs> so clan play. Um, a bit of a deeper overview of what we're doing. Clan play is today, after a lot of hard work, the highest rated app for gamers in the world. So 4.8 stars, over 30,000 reviews. It's not only my mother. Um, and we have more than a million users. That's fun. Uh, what we do, we are like a very equipped messaging app for gamers. Lots of communication channels. There are private conversations, group chats. Uh, we have dedicated clan chats, clans our teams inside games. We have public rooms and information that is taken from games. So clan play communicates. Oh, one of them died. Yeah, it's live, everyone. It's live. Yeah. Um, this is not ours. <laughs> um, and we take data from the game. So Clan Play is a companion app. Players are using it in their off time when they're not playing uh, to enrich their gaming lifestyle. Uh, one of the main games used in our app, and by the way, you see all these public chat rooms, they are in multiple uh, languages. This is our account, so users see them in you know, only one language. Um, one of our main games today is Clash Royale. It's a huge game, has more than a billion profiles. And we have a lot of their players on our platform as well. And you can see that some of the public rooms have special usages. So for example, this is a DEX room where people are taking DEX from within the game, sharing them to clan play and discussing around them. And these are deep linked back to the game. So Sar, if you press the deck taken from clan play, it can be copied into your uh, Clash Royale game. So a short overview for some of you that don't know this game. Uh, where have you been in the last five years? Um, this is a fun game. We love it. We play it all the time in the office. Uh, it's competitive. Here you can see the main screen. You see chests in the bottom. This part is chests. These are one after battles, right? You go to a battle, you win, you don't know which chest you're gonna get. So this is kind of random. Not really, but it's, it's a, it is a, a surprise factor. Um, and if you go to your profile, so I'll go up to the top. Yeah, so you can see that the player has some uh, data in his profile. Trophies count, winnings, cards, and so on. We take all of this data and we show it here. We also show the upcoming chests, which players really, um, value. It's interesting because it's semi-random. You can know the future. You can't affect it. Just because you know the chest doesn't mean you can change anything about it and you don't know what's in it, but people still are very attracted to it. Um, and then we have a back end system on our side that tracks all of this data and we can see all the actions players are taking inside the game. Uh, as long as we track them, it's kind of a pull mechanism. So now towards implementing KIN and how we looked at it. KIN is a cryptographic token and it carries value and we wanted to use it to enrich uh, the user's experience on our app and interact back to their gaming behavior. So enter Ken Turnis. One second, I uh, started another app without Ken. <laughs> ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's building. No worries. <laughs> so Ken tournaments are tournaments being created on Clan Play and they are measured by actions taken inside the game. Um, so for example, a new user go goes into the app, you can see that uh, SARS user does not have a wallet yet. Any interaction he they want to do with Kin will uh, trigger wallet creation. And when they create the wallet, they will uh, after a while be populated and get the 6,000 Kins they, uh, uh, they should. Uh, and with those Kins, they can go on to create tournaments. Now tournaments, and this is important to understand, are a great media for advertising. Players engage with tournaments, they love getting free stuff. And when you set up a tournament for one of the biggest games on earth today, you can, uh, you can tap into the wide audience and invite them to participate in your tournament. And while doing so, you get to advertise your cause, right? So Sar is gonna create a tournament, tell the world about his new pizza website and everyone that goes into this tournament will interact with the description, not, upon, not only upon entry, but also whenever they interact with the leaderboards. And if you participate in a match, you want to see where you stand. So this will be an ongoing experience. Going back to uh, the, uh, the description page. Now, Sar is creating this tournament. 
Michael uh, has refreshed and now you can see this new available tournament here. And when you go to inside the tournament, here is the information, the description. Uh, obviously it's live and it can, uh, there it will support uh, rich media, videos, images, and, and there's pizza, of course. Um, and then you can join the tournament. Joining does not cost money or cans. If it would, it would have been gambling. Um, so you can join tournaments for free. Now, as players, and so after you've created it, by the way, um, uh, tournament creators can also participate. This is a common behavior inside the game. Um, so after starting a tournament, uh, participants need to perform actions inside the game. So go on and play one of the matches. Um, this will be, we've set up the tournaments to, be five, to take five minutes, but they can take a day, a week, or so on. And there could be interim events. And any action that can be tracked inside the game can become a criteria for a tournament. This is really powerful. Now, Sarah is playing on the bottom. Uh, by the way, this is eSport, what you're seeing now. A bunch of people watching a game being played and someone narrating it. You've, yeah, your first eSport match live in this hackathon. Sarah is playing on the bottom side. He has a deck, uh, which are the cards. He just sent a fireball and killed this other guy's uh, archer. Oh. Uh, pump over there. All right, so while he's playing, I'll give you a short overview of esports. Esports have gone massive. Um, you've all, I guess, heard about it. The viewership for esports today is above 300 million people per year. I think, and I'm not sure that it has surpassed already a NBA viewership. So it's really big, and there's lots of people interacting with it. Um, even though the viewership for eSports e has become huge, the revenues that eSports participants are making are uh, ridiculously low. So last year, 2017, only 17,000 players registered as pro eSports players brought in an average monthly income of $550 per month. That's not a lot of players and it's not a lot of money. With this tournament feature, we can change it. Not only can we create the true long tail for eSport participation and let tens of millions of people earn money from their gaming activity, we can uh, improve on the effectiveness and measurement of tournaments because today they're done manually. So when you wanna run a tournament in a game and you wanna recognize the winners and so on, this has to be done manually registered. With clan plays tracking capabilities and kin as a motivation, we can automate tournaments and bring them to cross game platform and cross platforms. So the opportunities here are really massive. You can now set up tournaments to run from PC, mobile, and console together. Think of multi-talent teams competing in a new and very exciting uh, type of genre. And it can al also be broadcast from all devices, results being reported in real time. This has massive potential. So the time for this game is about to end. And I think, yeah, lost. maybe. Yes. Lose, don't make draw. <laughs> 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 we'll need to change, so progress will be changed. <laughs> draw doesn't affect the progress. Yes. <laughs> All right. So in Clash Royale, when the time ends, there is one more minute added for extra uh, you know, excitement. And then one more minute. Sar, no. OK. Sar has one less tower, and he lost this match. Now, back to our tourna tournament on clan play. You can see where are the participants. So here you can see, yeah. So you can see that uh, points were lost, trophies were lost because of the battle. And now Cheches, which is the nickname inside the game, is winning this tournament. Tournament will go on for 30 more seconds. Now, when the tournament ends, prizes will be uh, rewarded to players and you, you will see that uh, the prize pool is being distributed among participants. So the organizer gets some of his kin back, but usually there will be more than two participants and some of them will be taken back. Um, to put it all into summary, um, this is really exciting. It's taking kin and using it as a transfer of value and holding of value and uh, 
this is visible. So not only are you engaging with uh, kin transfers, you're also uh, conveying it to your friends. When you win a tournament, this becomes viral. People are happy and they're sharing it. Um, balance has changed, right? Yeah, you need to allow that. And people are sharing their tournament wins. Now it's live. <laughs> right. Um, in the beginning, Clan Play will seed these tournaments ourselves from the ground, will create tournaments, and as players participate in them and generate wallets for themselves, they'll be able to create tournaments on their own, and it spreads out like that. So Clan Play today has a million and a half users. It's a great testbed to start such a new feature and a great usage for Kin into a very engaged audience because gamers are super engaged. All right, guys. Thanks a lot.